Hello and welcome back to the Learn Rail YouTube channel. Today's uh, video is actually about um, the series user at GitLab. So if you're a developer of code, you will want to know how to do this. The particular topic is about um, working with code and branches and more specifically cloning code down, starting a new branch within that code of working directory making changes, then committing those changes to the staging directory, and then pushing those changes back up to a separate branch on the remote. <clears throat> so let me show you starting off what things look like without a branch. Here's the main project, and there's just the master branch, and there's only one branch. If I click here, you'll see it's just the master branch. If I click over here, you'll come to the same place. Again, just the master branch. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what it looks like in the master branch. Pretty simple, uh, a hidden file called .gitlab-ci.yaml, and then three more visible files, and the last one was second underscore file.txt. And I was doing some dry runs, that's why that file exists, and I'm going to get right to the business of why do we do branches. So think of uh, code as like uh, DNA, and you need to get a copy of the DNA, and then you need to make a tweak to it and analyze it and see how you like it. And then if you like it, you would re-push that DNA code change back to the main genome. And I'm using hopefully the right terms, and if you're a biology student and you're watching this video for some reason, I apologize if I mangled the, uh, the, the truth or the, uh, the, the techniques or the standards of the uh, language. But uh, if you're a coder, I think that is the best way to explain branching. You get a copy of the code, you put it in your own machine, and you start your own little world of development. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch over here to the SSH terminal, and I'm going to do a git clone of the master branch or the actual project. It doesn't matter if it's master or not. When you do a git clone like this command, precisely as you see it, you'll be cloning everything, all the files, all the history that has been pushed up to the remote, being the GitLab server. Now there are other options you can do, and I will demonstrate those techniques later, where you can clone a specific branch and none of the extra files, none of the extra history. So be aware of that you can do that if you really are tight on space constraints, but this is actually a best practice, I think, to clone everything down and then start your own new little world. So what's the next step? Let's take a look at what has been downloaded. Ansible hyphen notes. Let's get into that directory. All right. We list out all the hidden directories. We see the dot git, which you can't see up on the web, but when you do a git clone, this directory is generated by default. Here are the one, two, and three visible files, and then the dot gitlab hyphen ci.yaml file, the hidden file that I showed you before. That's this one. So all four of these files have been downloaded, plus the .git directory, which is hidden on the web, or created only on the development machine. So let me do a git status command and show you where we are. We are on the master branch on the development machine, and the master branch this is exactly a copy of the origin, which means whatever's up on the web. <clears throat> nothing to commit because we haven't made any changes. There's nothing in the working tree to uh, take into consideration of trying to push through the process of getting files from the develop machine back up. So now let me go ahead and touch a file. But no, let me create a new branch. So we'll do a git check out hyphen lowercase b space latest hyphen branch. When I do that, it's going to switch me over after creating this branch. Let's do a man on git hyphen checkout. And if we go down through here, we will find out that uh, doing the git checkout hyphen lowercase b or capital B will create a new branch, but depending on which lowercase or uppercase character you use, it has a different response. 
uh, it'll create a new branch, create it as a skip branch, what it's called, and then switch over to it. And then in this case, you can use the dash dash tracker, dash dash no track options. I never use this feature, so I'm not really concerned about it, which we pass on to the get branch. So um, what's different is that if you use capital B, the br new branch, if it's created, it doesn't exist already. Otherwise, it will basically zero out the history and start you off with the same label of this new world of code that you're working with. We didn't do that. We just said, start a new branch. I'm expecting there to be nothing in it. And now I'm going to start making my changes. Okay. So now that I've done the git checkout, I'm going to do a git status again. And we will now recognize that not being on the master branch anymore, I'm on the latest branch. But just like before, uh, there's nothing to commit and there's nothing in the working directory that's different. Let me do a touch of a file. Let's call it third file.txt. And now that I've done that, I need to basically do get status again and say, hey, can you tell me what has changed in the working directory and what needs to be committed, if anything? And now it says, hey, you're still on the latest branch, but here's some files that have not been tracked yet, meaning they haven't been added to the staging directory to be prepared for the ability to be pushed up to the remote. And when you push to the remote, you can either push to the master branch, we're not going to do that because we're demonstrating how to work with branches, or you can push to the branch that you have created. So here it tells you that third file.txt is not tracked yet. So what we need to do is handle that. So let's do a git add, as it tells you here, untrack but present, use git add to track it. So do a git add dash capital A space period. Or you can do a git add and then the file name. I'm gonna do dash capital A space period, which means from here and everything below. Let's get a hit and get everything accounted for and see if we can get it into the staging directory. So I do get status command again. Now you see it went from red to green and these are changes ready to be committed. They're not committed yet. And we are still on the latest branch. Okay, so we're making progress. Let me check on the web interface and let's see if anything is different yet. Well, uh, sorry to go back here to the main Ansible project, uh, Ansible notes project. And you still see there's only one branch because we haven't done anything yet to push the changes up to the web server. So now we will do a git commit. And when you do that, you can do a man on git hyphen commit or man git commit. And you'll find out that we need to specify a message. Otherwise it's gonna force us to type a message in the VI editor session with some words to explain what it is we're doing or why we're doing it and something to that effect. So I'm gonna simply say added third file.txt to late with, let's say with instead of to, with latest hyphen branch. And there we go. Now, the system will already know and tell you that third file is added when you do the next command. But when you do this commit message, you really want to be using different setup. Maybe specify a, a version of, of your code and what files are changed or why you made the changes. Uh, maybe some more details of what you've made in terms of those specific um, shell script or your Python script or your C code and what file you made the change and what changes in those files in terms of features. You don't want to get down to the nitty gritty of the syntax, but you have to do those. Now, final step is let's do a git push. Again, you could do a man on git hyphen push, or in some cases you could do a man on git space push. So let's see what we can do here. See, that worked. Or you can do a man on git hyphen push. Same page. I'm gonna do a git push minus u, and then I'm gonna say origin, meaning, hey, push it up to the remote server, but I'm gonna specify the branch, which happens to be the spring's latest hyphen branch without the period. 
And when I do this, it's now going to push the changes up to the web. And it did. Two changes were made. Really, it was only one. And now we can see that latest branch on this development machine, this machine, has been pushed up to the recently created latest hyphen branch on the remote. Let's find out. Let's do a refresh on page. And now we see not one branch, but two branches. If I click here, now we see latest hyphen branch. If I click here, it's going to be the same page. There we go. Here's my um, commit message that I did after the dash M with a git commit command. And if I click on this link, we'll see that now there's a third underscore file.txt. So that's it. That's hopefully uh, enough to get you started, your appetite wait, uh, wet, and uh, get you moving along with working with git and branches. The next video will be how to basically clone a branch, maybe to another machine if you need to, and um, then you can do all the exact same commands following uh, from the git add and your git commit and your git push to push changes back up to your branch again. Thank you.